Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will cover the impact of total daily calorie intake on body composition. First and foremost, let's establish what calories are. Calories are simply a unit of energy that we use to quantify energy intake. There are also other units that can be used to quantify energy like kilojoules, which measures the same thing, but it is just a different unit. Each food that we eat contains a certain number of calories and all the food we eat collectively in the day contributes to our total daily calorie intake. This total daily calorie intake may be consumed over a different number of meals or at different times, but this video will discuss the influence of the total daily intake on body composition. To understand the effects on body composition, we need to understand the concept of energy balance. This refers to how much energy we intake versus how much we expend. There are three primary different forms of energy balance we can be in at any given point in time. Let's now explore what these are. First is a calorie deficit. A calorie deficit is when our energy expenditure is greater than our energy intake. In other words, we are eating fewer calories than we are burning. A calorie deficit by definition ultimately results in weight loss over time. This is because we are literally using more fuel than we are intaking. Whether this weight loss comes from fat, muscle or other tissues is dependent on many other variables, but it should be understood that a calorie deficit will result in long-term weight loss. This can be achieved through a combination of exercise and nutrition, but as we established in the previous video, exercise has less direct impact on energy expenditure than you would expect. Therefore, the majority of the calorie deficit will probably come from nutritional interventions alone. The next form of energy balance we have is a calorie surplus. This is the opposite of a calorie deficit, which means that we intake more calories than we expend. By definition, this will result in weight gain over time. Once again, whether this weight is muscle, fat, or other tissue will be dependent on other variables, but it should be understood that a calorie surplus will result in long-term weight gain. A calorie surplus can be achieved via a combination of lowering energy expenditure or eating more calories, but eating more calories will be directly more effective. And the last form of energy balance we can be in is maintenance calories. This is when energy expenditure is equal to energy intake over time. This results in a maintenance of body weight over time because fuel costs meet fuel demands. Body composition changes can still occur during maintenance calories, but body weight will be stagnant. So now that we understand the various forms of energy balance we can be in at any given point in time, let's now explore how energy balance influences body composition. We will discuss the influence of calorie intake on both muscle size and body fat. First, let's explore how total daily calorie intake influences muscle size. There is one caveat we need to mention before discussing the details of this topic. We are assuming that trainees manipulating their nutrition for body composition are also performing resistance training either alone or in conjunction with other exercise. This is an important consideration because as we have established in previous videos, training is the stimulus for muscle growth while nutrition can only support these adaptations. So getting back to energy intake and muscle, let's explore how calorie intake influences muscle size. Well, as we mentioned, training is a stimulus for muscle growth, while nutrition just provides a supportive role. This means that it is possible to achieve muscle growth in all forms of energy balance. However, I think it is best to look at changes in muscle size on a spectrum rather than as strict rules. On one side of the spectrum, we have a calorie surplus. On the other side, we have a calorie deficit, and in the middle, we have calorie maintenance. We also have other variables like resistance training status, training effectiveness, and body fat level. So on one side of the spectrum, we are more likely to gain muscle, and on the other side of the spectrum, we are less likely to gain muscle or even lose muscle. So if we eat in a calorie surplus, we are beginner trainees, our training program is highly effective, and our body fat is not excessively lean, then our chances of gaining muscle are very high, or our rate of muscle growth will be faster. On the other hand, if we eat in a calorie deficit, we are highly advanced lifters, our training program is not very effective and we are very lean, then our chance of gaining muscle is very low and we are probably more likely to lose some muscle mass. So ultimately changes in muscle size are highly dependent on many different variables. However, to maximize the rate of muscle growth, a calorie surplus is recommended. Let's now explore how calorie balance influences body fat. Calorie balance is the primary factor influencing body fat. As we mentioned in a previous video on this series, Fat is basically just stored energy. We are constantly storing and using fat as fuel for energy production. 
However, when energy expenditure is greater than intake, energy will be used at a faster rate than it is being stored, resulting in weight loss. Similarly, when energy intake is greater than expenditure, fuel is being stored at a faster rate than it is being used, resulting in weight gain. So a calorie deficit will result in weight loss, while a calorie surplus will result in weight gain. However, how can we know what tissue this weight loss or weight gain is a result of? In other words, is the weight change due to muscle or to fat? This becomes quite nuanced and dependent on other variables, but for the most part, chronic changes in weight will primarily be a result of changes in fat mass. This is because muscle mass simply doesn't have the potential to increase at a very fast rate. Furthermore, like we mentioned, it is assumed that we are talking about nutrition in the context of trainees performing resistance training. So assuming the stimulus for muscle growth is there from training, muscle mass will slowly increase over time, while the primary change in weight will be a result of changes in body fat. However, over the course of a trainee's career, body weight can increase notably as a result of muscle growth. So what practical recommendations can we conclude regarding total daily calories and body composition? Well, the recommendations given are dependent on the individual specific goals at any given point in time. First, let's discuss calorie intake for the goal of maximizing muscle growth. As we mentioned, muscle growth is best achieved eating in a calorie surplus. However, the trade-off we have here is that during a calorie surplus, the majority of weight gain will actually be fat, while only a small portion will be muscle mass. This is contrary to the ultimate goal of improving body composition, because body fat will increase. Furthermore, we know that it takes a long period of time to see significant increases in muscle mass. Therefore, as a practical recommendation, a slow rate of weight gain for an extended period of time is probably going to be our best option for muscle growth. This is because it allows us to be in a surplus for a longer time frame without putting on unnecessary amounts of body fat. A rate of weight gain of no more than 0.5% of body weight per week for a minimum of six months is a general recommendation that is suitable for most trainees to maximize muscle growth while minimizing fat gain. However, if trainees want to push for a faster rate of weight gain, they can, although they should just understand the trade-off that body fat will increase more with only a slight, if any, further increase in muscle mass. In either case, calorie intake can be adjusted based on how the trainee is responding in terms of weight change. Next, let's discuss calorie intake for fat loss. Quite clearly, we need to be in a calorie deficit to see noticeable fat loss. The question really is, how much of a deficit should we be in? In other words, what rate of weight loss do we want to see? To answer this question, there are three factors we should be concerned with. First is muscle mass, second is practicality, and third is time frame. The rate of weight loss we implement depends on these factors. Generally speaking, a faster rate of weight loss increases the likelihood of muscle loss and is less practical in terms of lifestyle and behavior. However, weight loss will be achieved in a faster time frame. On the other hand, a slower rate of weight loss is generally more effective for muscle retention or even muscle gain and more practical in terms of behavior and lifestyle. However, this takes a longer time frame for the trainee to meet their goals. As a practical recommendation, it is advised that a maximum rate of weight loss of around 1% of body weight per week shouldn't be exceeded. While this is the fastest rate of loss that is recommended, there is no minimum rate of loss. This is only limited by your individual time frame and personal choice. And lastly, let's discuss weight maintenance. While weight maintenance doesn't necessarily maximize either muscle gain or fat loss, it can still be an effective calorie balance to live a healthy and active lifestyle while still gaining some muscle. Here, calorie balance is obviously at maintenance, meaning that weight doesn't change. Weight maintenance won't maximize muscle growth or fat loss, but a slow recomposition effect can occur over time, where the trainee gains muscle at the same body weight. However, there is one consideration we need to make regarding weight maintenance, which is body fat level. Those seeking to maintain body weight should ensure their body fat is at a sustainable level. If a trainee is too lean, they will find it practically very difficult to maintain this lifestyle and may experience negative health outcomes. There is ultimately a minimum level of body fat that trainees can maintain from both a practicality and a health point of view. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.